Hello students, today we're going to talk about quadrants and functions. Now the purpose is that at the end of this lesson you should be able to determine what quadrant a point is in given its coordinates. You should also be able to determine if a relation is a function. So just a couple quick definitions before we start. Quadrants, if you notice, the first four letters are quad, which usually refers to four. Now when we think of quadrants, we could think of a graph and how that's split into four different quadrants. So let me throw a quick graph on here so it's a tad bit easier to see. So if we were to take this line and put it on a graph like so, we're able to take this and split it up into four different quadrants. This quadrant is labeled quadrant one and we write it in Roman numerals. And from the rest, we actually label them in counterclockwise order. So that was one, this is two, this is three, and this is quadrant four. So that's how we determine what quadrants our points lie in. There's a very special point called the origin, and the origin lies right in the center, or right in the intersection of these two lines, which is right here in blue. Oftentimes you'll see the letter O right next to it, and that's how people know that that's where the origin is. So that's the origin. Our x-axis is this line that goes horizontally left and right. So that's this line in red. This is our x-axis. Our y-axis, which we will do in green, is our vertical line, or the line that goes up and down. So x-axis in red, y-axis in yellow. The last part is our coordinates, or I put aka also known as ordered pair. Now your ordered pair will always look like x comma y in parentheses. And we'll talk about how to plot these points in just a second. But keep in mind, a lot of students and students oftentimes mix the two up. Now remember, when we do the alphabets, x always comes before y. So when we graph points, it's always x first and then y. So just to do a quick recap of what we did, let's look at this little table that we made which I don't know if you noticed, but was hidden in the corner. So, here it is. Now notice that we have, notice the point two, four, or negative two, four. When we graph this, we're gonna start at the origin. Let's make sure our two lines match up. We're gonna start at the origin, and because your x, which is your left and right value, says negative two, we're gonna move two places to the left because it's negative, and because the four is a positive on the y-axis, means we move up four, so one, two, three, four, and we always start at the origin. So let's try plotting a few points and naming what quadrant it's in. Example one is two, six. So we are going to start off at the origin, so right at the center your x value is two, positive two, that means two to the right, so one, two. And because your y value is six, you're gonna move up six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're gonna call that point A. Let's try example two. Start at the origin. Your x value is negative three, so we move to the left three. One, two, three, and up five. One, two, three, four, and five. We're gonna label this point B because it has a B right next to it. Point C, by now you should probably get a, you should probably be familiar, familiar with what we're gonna do next. Start at the origin. Your X value is negative four, that means left four because it's negative, and your Y value is negative two, so down two. One, we're going to call that point C. Last part 
This is an interesting question. It says x is positive and y is negative. So if x is positive, that means we should move to the right. So anywhere here, and it says y is negative. So that means we need to go down here. So I'm just going to make up a point. Now, remember, point A, because it asks us to name what quadrant it's in, point A is in quadrant 1, it's quad 1. Point B is in quadrant 2. Point C is in quadrant 3. And example 4 is in quadrant 4. So, next thing we're going to look at is something that could be fairly confusing, so I want to make sure you're really paying attention. Now, a relation should make sense to you guys, even though it sounds like it's confusing because it's a math word. Relation is just like what you guys have with your family, a relationship. It determines how things are related and how they're affected. So there might be a few people living in your family. You have your mom, and you're related to her, but you're related to her because she's your mom. If you have a brother, then you're related to them because they're your brother or they're your sibling. So that's what a relation actually does for us. So a relation tells us how two things are related. The domain gives us gives us all the values that x can be. The range is all or gives us all the values that x or that y can be. Now, a function is a little bit more tricky of an explanation. A function tells us if two if a relation actually can function where every value in the domain or every value in the x values is paired with exactly one value in the range or the y values. So the definition would be that an equation is a function if each value for x is paired with a unique value for y. So we're going to give you a couple different examples to help explain what a function is. A vertical line test, before we move on, is a test to determine if a graph is a function or not. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a couple different graphs to help us determine that. 